You know, I had it all planned out. I was going to come into frame with Kenny Loggins' Danger Zone playing, wearing my nicest leather jacket, Ray-Bans, and a white t-shirt. But apparently my leather jacket shrunk about two sizes since I got married, and all I have are these knockoff Ray-Bans. Luckily I've got a t-shirt though, but you're not here for that. You want to find out what on earth I'm screen printing that has to do with a jet fighter. So let's find out. So, as some of you know, I do some textile printing from time to time. You may remember me from such videos as, I just lost $4,000, how am I still in business? Well, sometimes it doesn't go so terribly. In fact, I get a few cool jobs from time to time. The latest really cool job I got was to print flight tags. These prints are actually going on nylon reinforced polyvinyl that's going to be sewn into the remove before flight tags that get put into moving parts that shouldn't be moving and areas where they want to keep moisture out when a jet is not in service. I mean, this is a really cool job and one that my customer's been teasing for about a year and a half. Apparently the contract finally came through for him and as a result came through for us. So the question you may be asking yourself is, do you have to do anything special in order to print nylon reinforced polyvinyl? And the answer is absolutely. Because nylon has such a low melting point, we've heat pressed bags before and the nylon just melted and created a weird puddle. Terrible learning experience trying to clean that up. Um, but we have to use ELT or extra low temperature cure inks, something that's going to react and pull all of the plasticizer out of it by about 225 to 250 degrees. That way, we can send these through without shrinking, puckering, disfiguring, or worse, melting through our belt. This is actually going to be the first time that we've tried to run polyvinyl or flag material through our automatic. On our manual press, we've done dive flags, polyvinyl sheets before, just you name it, we've tried it. But the automatic is a different beast. Um, you have to dial in a lot of your settings ahead of time, and since I don't have a bunch of extra pieces of this material lying around, I'm going to have to try it out on some Pellons to make sure that we've got at least the overall look and feel down to where we want it. We're going to have to measure out where things go, and then we're just going to have to roll the dice in the very first piece and hope it comes out perfect. So for this job, I decided to go with a 156 screen mesh. Um, I was worried that with a 110, we were going to end up just blowing our stencil right out and, and having ink going everywhere because the nylon reinforced polyvinyl material that we're using isn't perfectly flat. The, the weave and the mesh that's inside there reinforcing the structure is such that you might have raised areas and lower areas and I think that could be just enough to overcome the stencil. Um, a 230, on the other hand, I don't think that is enough ink going through because we aren't going to pass flash past these. We're going to hit it with one solid pass of ELT ink and let it come out the other side, or at least that's the game plan. And I think a 156 is going to allow us to do that. out my gallon of ELT white ink and I forgot what an absolute bear this stuff can be right out of the can. I mean I'm not sure if you can tell but I am bending the heck out of the spatula just to get any momentum here. That's one thing that I like to do before I go to press is just kind of loosen up the ink. Polyester inks, ELT inks, it seems like a lot of these specialty inks just get really viscous when they're put away into storage for a little while. And obviously this gallon of ink is no exception. It is just a mess. I almost want to get a, a drill and break it up a little bit. But I would rather keep this ink thick rather than hit it with some um, curable reducer because it is a low temperature curing ink and curable reducer is gonna have a standard cure temp. 
And the second reason is I want to make this as opaque as possible so that I have the best chance of not having to hit it twice. Now that we've got the ink relatively softened up, I've gone ahead and put the screen in its place and it is, for all intents and purposes, as registered as we're going to need it. Um, because we used our set and go pre-registration system and there's not a second color that we have to worry about. We're going to go ahead and lay this ink down here. Ah! What did I do? I didn't lock it into place. Oh man. We've gone ahead and loosened up the ink as much as it's going to be loosened up. And I've put some of that ink across here so that the squeegee will hit it. And we're going to go ahead and run a test print now. Alright. Here it goes. Oh, ho, not a long enough stroke. Let's adjust that. Let me do that right here. This rail makes it a real short stroke right here. Extend that out. Pull it to the end. Bring it a little farther back. And let's see if... Eh, it's probably going to require the whole thing because this is about the max limit of our print, print capacity here. Alright, let's pull it back. Give another go. Ooh, did we clear that R? I can't tell if we cleared the R or not. Let's pull it back and see. I don't think so. I really don't think so. We did? What do you know? So this is what it's going to look like right there. Now we need to go ahead and measure it to find out how much space we need for one of these guys to be fully centered. All right, so I actually had to completely abandon this job yesterday and come back to it today because there was a pretty serious hiccup. The flight tags were cut at two different times, apparently, and some of them were only about 22 and a half inches, whereas other ones were 23 inches. And while they're supposed to be around three inches wide, there was a variance of as much as a half an inch. Some of them were 2.75, some of them were three and a quarter. And I had to know whether or not we had some wiggle room to spare here. Um, and I even had to adjust this back there. We were measuring our initial one at 22 and a half. And I figured with a 14 and a half inch print stroke that we were going to need, uh, I miscalculated it and said seven, but it was really closer to eight inches. Um, split in two, four inches here, four inches back here, in order to print these centered lengthwise. So I reached out to the customer and said, hey look, you know, if I'm justifying these to our, our back corner and our left side, or even trying to center it between the, the two lasers and create a template here, um, this could be an issue if it needs to be exact down to, you know, an eighth of an inch. Um, and since this client is moose hunting in Alaska right now, <laughs> fancy, fancy, it took him a little while to get back with me. So we picked it back up today, did what other stuff we had to do, and I've got my template dialed in now so that we're mostly going to be in between um, this, this laser template and we're backing up a little farther here this time around. And this gives us a pretty centered print. Because we are set up, we're going to go ahead and get these knocked out and we'll give you a follow-up here. All right, so here we are at the very end. Um, overall, I think they came out pretty well, considering we could only do a pass-plass with no flash in between. We got really decent ink coverage on them. Let me see if I can really get crisp there. Decent ink coverage. The stencil held pretty well. I mean, and this is a highly textured um, piece of fabric, so as far as textiles go, this was not super easy to work with. Um, the ELT ink held up really well, didn't have to reduce it, didn't have to do anything funny with it. And um, talking to the client about the centering on these, because that was, that was one of my big concerns, was because there's so much room or, or difference in the spacing between the sides. It looks like they just manually cut these, if you can see. I don't know if you can see how uneven it is. But if I were to put like a ruler next to it, it's clearly not a straight line. And, um, you know, that was my concern. And they told me that the edges of these are going to get a treatment. So either they're going to do a stitch, bead stitch, all the way up and down them on both sides, or they're going to be mounting something else uh, to border it 
somehow, and then they're going to put um, a grommet in to, to tie it with some kind of cord or something like that. So overall, when this is finished, it is going to have a perfect shape and it's going to match the dimensions they need. Um, but from our standpoint, as long as we have a third of an inch around it on all sides and three, three and a half inches over here, we're good. Um, but that's that. So this is the textile printing that we're doing for a jet fighter. How cool is that? I hope you all enjoyed watching that video as much as I did making it. I know it wasn't me falling on my face or anything particularly educational, just kind of a status update with a cool job that we had flowing. Um, but we'll keep it coming. I've got about 30 ideas right now that I've been jotting down for new videos. Um, everything from sales to prospecting to uh, maybe some particular techniques, although that's, that's covered by a lot of other channels who do it very well, so I don't really want to be cliche. I'd rather just talk to you guys about my personal experiences, some of the issues that I've faced over the years, things that I've done to overcome that, and kind of the direction that we're moving towards so that we can all kind of grow in this industry together and do some really impressive things. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.